Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got a 2005 GMC Sierra 2500 with a Duramax diesel and also the Allison transmission. And I'm going to be replacing the internal transmission filter along with the external and then, of course, the fluid as well. Pop your hood. And then, with your hood popped over here on the passenger side, this uh, black dipstick right here, this is going to be your transmission. So just go ahead and uh, kind of pull out on that. Okay, so go ahead and crawl underneath the vehicle here. Locate your uh, transmission pan, which will be right here. This does have a drain plug. That'll be a 15 millimeter. And uh, get yourself a large drip pan to collect it all. And I like to measure out how much came out. And we kind of use that as a reference to when we go filling. And uh, this transmission is cold. It sat overnight. I prefer to do it this way because uh, transmission fluid expands with heat. So let's go ahead and pull this drain plug out of here and we'll let this drain. So go ahead and let that drain. So while that's draining, let's go ahead and take off the uh, external transmission filter here. Let's see if I can do it by hand. Just go ahead and unscrew it. Yeah, that's on there too tight. So take you an oil filter wrench if you have to. Get that around there. Go ahead and unscrew that. And let that drain here for a second. And go ahead and pull that off the rest of the way here. And then just double check, make sure you got that magnet there. You can see that. So go ahead and let that drain. Once that's pretty much done draining, you can go ahead and uh, stick your drain plug back up in here. Just so that's not dripping on us. And you can go ahead and tighten that up if you want. So next, let's go ahead and uh, grab a 13 millimeter. We'll start pulling all these uh, transmission pan bolts here, and then uh, we'll go ahead and lower the uh, pan. So then as you get to this uh, last one here, what you want to do is kind of hold your pan. We'll take this out and then we'll slowly lower it here. So hold your pan. Get that out of there. And then slowly lower your pan here. And you can kind of go towards the front here. And then drain whatever is left in there. And then get your pan out of the way. And then with your pan out of the way, of course, this is our filter. You can see it slides up into the transmission right there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll pull down on the filter 
drop that down and there should be quite a bit of more fluid that'll come out of there as well. We'll just go ahead and pull down on this. You can see that just pops out. Go ahead and empty the rest of this too. And get that out of the way. And then if you look up in there, sometimes it'll come out with the filter, sometimes it won't. You'll see that orange O-ring. So we need to remove that. So I'm just gonna use a little pick here. See if we can just kind of pry that out of there. So just like that. Okay, so now let's take a look at our uh, pan and our filter. And uh, this gasket that's on here is reusable, which I will be reusing. Just as long as it's in good shape, you can go ahead and kind of just peel this off of here. And then I'll go ahead and get that cleaned up. Uh, let me go ahead and empty this into this drain pan here. Of course, the other drain pan is still underneath there because that's dripping. Let's get that drained in there. And then you got a magnet right here, which you'll pull. Maybe it's kind of stuck on there, but you got a magnet. So I'll go ahead and clean this all up and then uh, I'll use some uh, brake clean, get this all cleaned up as well. And then also the gasket mating surface there. And then I'll probably use some compressed air to get all the dust if there is any. So let me go ahead and get this all cleaned up real quick. Okay, so as you can see, you got the pan all cleaned up here. Uh, used some compressed air and brake clean, wiped it all off plus the gasket surface. And then I also cleaned up this uh, gasket. So I just went ahead and wiped that all down. And that'll just set on there like that. Also got the magnet cleaned up. So I'll go ahead and put this back where it was. And then our filter. So I'm with the uh, genuine OEM 29537965. Got this off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Like I said, this doesn't come with a gasket because they expect you to reuse that one. And uh, that's what it looks like. You can see it comes with the new orange uh, O-ring. So if we compare it to this one here, you can see it looks pretty much the same thing here. Flip it over and all that matches as well. So let's go ahead and uh, stick this filter in now. So then grab your new filter here. And uh, I'm just going to take some of this old fluid here and then just kind of coat this uh, orange O-ring with it wherever you can find some of it here. Just make sure that O-ring's nice and lubed up here. Now let's go ahead and uh, we'll shove it up in there. And again, just be careful while doing this. Just kind of, it'll just press right up in there and then the friction kind of holds it. So just like that. And as you can see, it'll kind of hang down a little bit on the back here, but that's normal. So just like that. And now uh, before I grab my pan, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all around the uh, gasket surface here, get that cleaned up and then uh, we can get the pan on. Okay, so with that gasket surface all cleaned up, let's go ahead and uh, grab our pan really quick here. We'll get your pan up underneath here. Make sure your gasket's centered. And I'll probably get a few of the uh, bolts started here. Let's kind of get that lined up. I said, just get a few of these started here, just to hold it up.
should be good with just two. So I'll go ahead and uh, get the rest of these started and uh, also get them just snug. And then we can do the uh, final torque here at the end. And it's always good to uh, just stick these in by hand. That way you don't uh, cross thread them. So just always get these started by hand. Okay, so I got all those started by hand, but uh, before I go ahead and start torquing them, um, I wanna get this pan out of the way, but let's go ahead and get our uh, external filter on so that doesn't uh, keep dripping on us. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, external filter here. So like I said, make sure this magnet comes off with the old filter there and it's not stuck up in there, or I've seen where people don't even know this magnet exists. So they'll unscrew the uh, filter and then they just toss the filter and then that magnet's gone. So what I like to do is uh, I like to just buy, if it's a car, I don't know, or a truck, I don't know. I mean, I like to just buy the new uh, external filter that comes with a new magnet. It's only a few bucks more. Um, but this is the genuine Allison. I got this off of uh, Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. You can see it has the new magnet already on there because I didn't want to run into a problem where I unscrewed that filter and then that magnet's gone. And then I got to wait on a magnet. So I just go ahead and order it with it. And then also I'll show you what fluid I'll be using. So this calls for uh, Dexron 3, which came from the factory with Dexron 3. But they don't make that anymore. So now Allison recommends you use this Castrol Transcend 668 in these uh, Allison 1000 transmissions. So I went ahead and got uh, three gallons of it. And then what I'm gonna do real quick here is I like to just uh, prime this filter with some new fluid. Just put a little bit in there because I don't like putting a dry filter on there. So let me go ahead and open this. And then let's just go ahead and uh, fill this filter up here. So that should be good. And then like I said, just take this magnet, stick that on there. And then also, if you take your finger, just get you some new fluid here and then coat this uh, gasket here with some new fluid. And let's go ahead and stick this up in the truck. So before you stick that up in there, just go ahead and clean around it here. Just wipe it down pretty good. Get that cleaned up. And then before you put your filter on, just grab your magnet here and just go ahead and stick that up there like that. And go ahead and screw this on. Go ahead and just hand tighten this, just like an oil filter. So just like that, wipe it off. And now let's go ahead and uh, get these snug and I'll get the torque wrench. So when I go to snug these, I'm gonna go kind of a crisscross pattern. Like I said, I'm just gonna use a little tiny impact here and then uh, we'll use the torque wrench here. Okay so with all those snug go ahead and grab your uh, torque wrench and you're going to torque all these to 20 foot pounds and like I said I'll go in a kind of a crisscross pattern again here.
once you get all those uh, torqued, I like to just go around each one again and then uh, just double check just in case you missed any. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Then just double check your uh, drain plug bolt there. Make sure that's nice and tight. Should be good there. So now I wanna see how much uh, fluid actually came out of it. So here's our original drip pan and then that other one there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this into this one here. And then what I'll do is I got these two empty uh, oil jugs. Both of them are empty and these are five quarts each. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump what's in here into these jugs here and then we can measure and see how much came out. All right, so if you take a look here, you can see the first jug looks like we're right at exactly four quarts. Uh, the second one here, we're gonna be about four and a half or so. And then, um, of course, there's still probably some left in that uh, filter there. And then uh, you can see there's still a little bit in here. But uh, I think we'll be safe to add a total of eight quarts to start out with. And then we can uh, drive it around, get it up to temp, and uh, recheck. So go ahead and remove your dip stick out the rest of the way there. Grab a long, clean funnel. I'm going to use something like this. Stick that down in the dipstick tube there. And we'll go ahead and add a total of eight quarts, so two gallons. And then we can start it and uh, check. Okay, so there's two gallons, which will be uh, eight quarts. So go ahead and get your dip or your funnel out of here. And you go ahead and just stick your dipstick back in there for now. And let's go ahead and start it. So now we can go ahead and start it. Let that run for a second here. Now let's go ahead and go through each gear, pausing a little bit in between. So I'll go ahead and put it in reverse. Neutral. Drive. Third. Second, first, and then I'll go all the way back up. And then back to park. So I'll go ahead and do this one more time, and then uh, we'll go ahead and jump out and check the level. Okay, so with it back in park and uh, leave it running, and you can see down there in the bottom left-hand corner of transmission, you can see it's still cold. So let's go ahead and hop out and uh, check it on the dipstick. So go ahead and grab your dipstick here. Wipe it off. And if you look on here, you'll see we got a hot crosshairs and then we also have cold. So we're checking to make sure we're in the uh, cold crosshairs. So stick it back in there. Pull it 
it out. And you can see, so we are about right here. So we still need to get in this area. So let's go ahead and add some more to it. So I'm gonna start out with about one quart. So we'll go uh, right to right to there at the three. about right there I'll go ahead and let this drain down into the transmission and we'll uh, recheck okay so I let that sit for a few minutes here let that drain down into the transmission pull your funnel out grab your uh, dipstick stick it down in there pull it back out wipe it off And you can see now we are halfway in the cross, cold crosshairs. So I'm gonna call that good. We'll take it for a spin, get it up to temperature, and this fluid will start to climb to the uh, hot crosshairs, and then we'll see if we need to add any or not. And then before you take off, just take a peek underneath here. Just make sure you're not uh, dripping any transmission fluid. And that looks good. Okay, so I just got back from a drive. Uh, it took me a while to get it up to temp. You can see the bottom left there. So our transmission is at a normal operating temperature where it should be. And then of course you can see our on the bottom right there, our uh, coolant temp as well. So let's go ahead and uh, check our level now. So go ahead and pull your dipstick out. back in there, pull it out, and as you can see, camera zoom, but we are right there, right in the middle of the uh, hot crosshairs, so I'm going to call that good, that way if it warms up a little more, still has room for this uh, fluid to climb up to the top of the hot crosshairs. So as long as you're in the uh, hot crosshairs, you should be good. Alright, so that's going to do it for the video. Again, this was a 2005 GMC Sierra 2500 with a 6.6 .6 Duramax diesel and the Allison transmission. I went ahead and replaced the internal transmission filter along with the external and then also new transmission fluid. So all in all, I ended up using right at nine quarts and a quarter. Uh, your guys' will depend on how long you let there and sit it drain and then also the temperature of the fluid as well. But you'll be safe if you buy just three gallons of that fluid. And uh, hopefully this video helps you out. If it does, why don't you subscribe to the channel? Check out some of my other videos. I got a few on this truck alone. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.